Okay, so starting to move on to the last section dealing with graphing, which is good because there's a lot of stuff we got to tie together, but just wanted to look at a couple of problems here. Uh, and again, I've, I've kind of done some of the work here, which we'll go through just to save a little bit of time. But the function they give us is y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 3x plus 10. And the directions say sketch the graph of the function, choose a scale that allows all relative extrema and points of inflection to be identified on the graph. So it's implied that they want you to find those things first. Okay. Well, again, you know, it's a little bit of work, but all the tools, I mean, we have at this point. Okay, so where's the function increasing and decreasing, and where are the relative maximums and minimums? Let's start with that. Okay. So to figure that out, we first look at the derivative of the function. So this is my function. Okay, y equals x cubed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, the derivative is 3x squared minus 12x plus 3. So remember, to find critical numbers, I look for when the derivative is either 0 or undefined. Well, this derivative can never be undefined. There's no division by 0 or anything. So I just set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, now, the book is great about doing this. You know, sometimes these equations aren't easy to solve. This is a quadratic equation, but it does have two kind of unusual solutions, 2 plus the square root of 3 and 2 minus the square root of 3. You can find them using the quadratic formula, but I just round them to, rounded them to 3.7 and 0 0.3. So those are the two values that make the derivative 0. Okay. So what that means is that I'm going to have three intervals to test and see if my function is increasing and decreasing. Everything to the left of 0.3, okay, everything between these two critical numbers, and everything to the right of 3.7. So I made those three test intervals. I picked a number for x and plugged it into the first derivative, and here's what I found. On the first interval, okay, the derivative is positive, so the function's increasing. On the second interval, I picked a point in here like 1 for x, put that into the derivative, and I found that the derivative is negative, so the function's decreasing in that interval. And then finally, to the right of 3.7, uh, whoops, that should just be the first derivative. The first derivative is positive, so it's increasing again. Okay, so basically I can actually figure out where the relative mix minimums and maximums are just based on that. You see, since the derivative changed from increasing to decreasing at the first critical number, okay, that's going to be a relative maximum. So at 0.3 comma f of 0.3, which is 10.4, okay, at that point I'm going to have a relative maximum. Okay, so once I see that it, the graph uh, has to change from increasing to decreasing, I know that at that number, 0.3, that x coordinate, that would have a maximum. So if I put 0.3 in for x, I got about 10.4 for y, so that will be a relative maximum. Okay. Now the next critical number is also important for us, 3.7, where the function changes from decreasing to increasing. So when that happens, we know that there's going to be a minimum when x is 3.7. So I put 3.7 in for x, and I turned, it, turned out to see what y is, and it was negative 10.4. Okay, so we've got a relative maximum at 0.3 comma 10.4, a relative minimum at about 3.7, negative 10.4. Okay. okay, now what about concavity? That's the other thing they want us to, to deal with here. Well, for concavity, we ask very similar questions, but about the second derivative. So I computed the second derivative, which is much easier, you know, much simpler to, to, to analyze, 4x minus 12. Okay. Again, that's never going to be undefined, because I'm not dividing by 0 or anything like that. But it will be 0 if x is equal to 3. So concavity can change when x is 3. Okay, it's kind of like what we just did, but now we're doing it with the second derivative to figure out something about concavity. Okay. So just one number, and again, they don't call these critical numbers, but they're like critical numbers except for the second derivative. Okay. Now, if I just have one of them, then I'm going to have two intervals to test. Okay. Everything to the left of 3 and everything to the right of 3. So I picked a number to the left of 3, put it into the second derivative, and I got a negative number. Okay. So that means to the left of 3, the function's concave down. Okay. Now to the right of 3, I picked a number, probably 4, put it in for x, and I saw that the second derivative is positive. Okay. That means that to the right of 3, okay, for those x values to the right of 3, the function will be concave up, be curving upward. Okay. And that actually, in turn, tells me that 3 is a special point. It's a point where concavity changes. So when x is 3, the graph changes from concave down to concave up, so that's an, uh, going to be the location of an inflection point. So when x is 3, way back in the original function, y is equal to negative 8. Okay, that means I have an inflection point at 3, negative 8. Okay. 
So what we'd like to do now is, is, is graph the function based on all this information. And again, it's kind of hard to do keeping it all up, but I suppose if I erase this work here, I can probably fit in some axes here. So uh, the points we need to plot are basically, you know, again, they even say this in the problem, choose a scale where you'll be able to plot your relative maximums and minimums and inflection points. So actually, let me, let me choose a scale that's going to make this easy for us. I'm going to make each tick mark about five units. Okay. Okay, so just tuck that away a little bit. Okay, so what do we see? Well, we see that the function is increasing and then decreasing and increasing. So it increases until it gets to uh, that relative maximum, right? It increases until x is 0.3. So at 0.3 comma 10.4, right about here, we have that maximum. So our function is increasing, and then at that point it's decreasing. And it decreases until we get to 3.7, which is where we have our relative minimum. Okay. Right. It's decreasing uh, between 0.3 and 3.7. So about 3.7, we're at a minimum, which they say is just a little bit less than negative 10, negative 10.4. So it's going to go down. Okay. And then it increases past 3.7, so something like that. Now, since these are, are numbers which made the derivative 0, the 0.3 and the 0.7, I can actually kind of tweak my graph a little bit and really make it look like the slope is 0 at these points. Okay. Now, the only other thing I need to graph on here is concavity. Make sure concavity and the inflection points are clear. Well, if you look at the inflection point at 3, negative 8, which is about here, that was the location of our inflection point, I would say right about here. Okay, so what do I need here to finish the graph correctly? I need increasing, decreasing, increasing, which I have in the right location between the minimum and the maximums. Uh, and then at the inflection point, concavity needs to change. It's going to be concave down until it gets to this point, and then it's going to switch to concave up. So, you know, the graph looks pretty good so far, but I might just kind of finish it in a way that, that looks nice here. Again, the inflection point's a little bit hard to spot, but it should be pretty clear if you look carefully at the graph, roughly where the inflection point is. I can see that the graph is curving down, and then somewhere over in here it changes, and then that's pretty clear from the graph. But I would probably go ahead and mark this inflection point on the graph just so it is you know, abundantly clear where it occurs. But in any case, that's a, that's a very decent graph of this function. If you go to your graphing calculator and graph it in maybe just a little bit bigger window than the standard window, you'll see a, a graph which looks almost identical to this. You know, the only thing we, we kind of skipped out on a little bit are the x and y intercepts, which is definitely kind of a secondary thing at this point. But if you want to figure out where the graph crosses exactly the x and y axis, well, we can certainly do that um, you know, just by a little bit of algebra. But the, the basic shape of the graph doesn't come from algebra, it comes from calculus, because we can figure out things like you know, where increasing and decreasing behavior occurs and where the concavity is, say, concave up and concave down. That's, that's a technique from calculus.